If you're thinking about moving and you wanna learn about what everyday life is gonna be like in your new town, this is the place for you. On Open House, we sit down with local top producing real estate agents to help you find the best places to live in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So if you don't want buyer's remorse and you wanna find your dream town, we are here for you. So go ahead and book a free call with us and we'll help guide you to the area that is right for you. Now let's jump in and learn about your new home. Hi, this is Mike with Open House Media, and if you're ready to take a deep dive into what it's like to live, work, and play in Richmond, Virginia, then you found the right video, because I have Sandra Francesco with me, and she is a licensed real estate agent who knows all the ins and outs of the city and is ready to help us see it from a local's perspective. So, Sandra, how long have you been a realtor? I've been a realtor for 30 years. Um, my anniversary was just last August, and actually, I've been with the same company ever since for 30 years 30 years. well let's say i've been in the same office for 30 years the company's changed but i have <laughs> that is an impressive amount of time yes um yep. how long have you uh how long have you lived in richmond i've lived in richmond since um let's see 1984 so about right, 38 years yeah right. oh my god i'm older than i thought um <laughs> <laughs> and uh what uh what made you get into real estate well, um, I was bartending at the time, uh, you know, after I got out of college, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I bartended for a while and then, you know, everybody was smoking at the bar. I had to get out. So I started to think, what am I do? So I wanted to do pharmaceutical sales, but they all wanted more experience, more outside sales experience. We had a lot of realtors that came in for lunch, um, at the bar and I talked to them and there was one guy in particular and he kept going, you would be excellent in real estate so after about the fourth or fifth time i started thinking about them, that's what i'll do so i went and took the test and um i i bartended and sold real estate for six months and i said at the end of the six months i'm gonna i'm gonna have another career or i'll be still bartending but i had another career had not looked back it's been great <laughs> uh, kind of interesting that that one rando at the bar has has made a profound difference in your life in that, in that capacity. Well, yeah, but there were you know there were others, but he was very persistent and um, super nice guy. I mean, I think there's an easy correlation to make there between that industry and the real estate industry. You know, you 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 need to be friendly, you need to be personal, you need to understand sales, and right. all those things are very overlapping. So right. that that's a that's a pretty common pipeline. Uh, the mm -hmm. the service industry to real estate pipeline because it's, there's just so much overlap. It's just selling something different, you know. Right, right, exactly. So uh, Richmond, um, I, I would describe it as a, a, a medium to large city. I think about a medium. I think the uh, the population for the city of Richmond. I looked it up the other day. I mean, look at my notes, and it was like. It's like 1.3 million in the metropolitan area. So, um, you know, Richmond has, you know, maybe a third of those people, but, uh, but it's, it's a smaller, you know. I, I find that, that to me, Richmond is, you know, I think a lot of your larger cities uh, kind of all feel the same. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's if, if you go to um, Chicago or DC or Baltimore or Philadelphia, you kind of get the kind of the same feel in a lot of areas of those cities uh -huh. where it's just, it's a large city. Um, I, I've always found that Richmond is a bit more personable and kind of unique than, mm -hmm. than a lot of those. And it's probably yeah. its size, but it's also probably a byproduct of, of its age and the history there. We have a race um, every year and it's a, a 10 K and it's known as the friendliest race in the world, basically. So, because yeah, people are out there, they're just, you know, they're they're clapping you on, we've got music stations everywhere. And uh, it's a fun race to participate or to watch. I mean, it's great branding. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, 
You know, you know, like, well, what? I've never done a race before. Which one should I do? Well, have you thought about the friendliest race? Ever? The friendliest race. That's right. <laughs> so, when it comes to the city itself, um, you know, I'd imagine there's a lot, there's a lot of businesses in the city. A lot of probably contractors, corporations, things like that that are that are pretty obvious. Um, mm -hmm. Is there is there people commuting? from richmond to like a dc or yeah there are a few not a lot they have um you know a lot of them are um are ride sharing where there's also a train that goes from um ashland to dc basically non-stop and um but you know you do have some because they, they have articles in the paper about them i don't know any specifically that do that and there's some that travel you know just everywhere but there are some people that actually you know go to go to dc or Northern Virginia every day to, for work. You know, it, depending on the time of day, that can be a drive. That's a real drag. <laughs> and it would be those times that you're going back up there and back. <laughs> yeah, probably the times that you would be commuting there. How, how long does it take, if you're going not during rush hour, obviously, how long would you say it takes to get to DC? Oh, you can get to DC, you know, depending, as long as it's not rush hour, you could get to the DC area in about two hours. So, but you know, if it's if it's rush hour or there's an accident, you could be looking anywhere from two hours and fifteen minutes up to five hours. Five hours would be the accident time, definitely. The accident time, exactly. <laughs> so, is there any? I, I know there's, there's some. Is there any larger industries in Richmond? In Richmond, we've got, um, let's see, uh, Altria, we've hmm. got Genor, we have uh, Needless Vaco, we've got Capital One, oh. we have, uh, what's the car, CarMax, um, Legos is getting ready to come into town, and and when I say come into town, it's not necessarily Richmond, it's it's a Richmond metropolitan area, but it affects sure. all of our area, because they're all bring, you know, they all bring jobs and stuff. Lots of big corporations. Richmond's not a one industry town. We've got tons of industries that keep us going. So our economy tends to be a little bit better than some of our neighboring places like, you know, Pittsburgh or because they're, they're steel. But we've got so, we're very diverse here, which is nice. Yeah. And that always kind of, it, it almost, it, it insulates you from an economic standpoint, being a little more diverse than uh -huh. being reliant upon one particular industry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are, uh, what are the big schools in the area? Big schools, well, colleges, you know, in Richmond, you've got VCU, you've got U of R, University of Richmond, uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. You also have Virginia Union University. We have some great um, community schools as well. So we've got uh, J. Sergeant Reynolds, we have John Tyler, and then, you know, Chesterfield, Hanover, and Henrico are really well known for their, their good public schools. Mm. You know, when I was younger, I probably would have never appreciated when I was determining where I was moving. But uh, as you get older and you have kids, it, it's a much more relevant piece of information to know that there is good schools available in an area. Oh, yeah. Plus, you know, where there are good schools, there, tend to, there tends to be a more stable environment. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. There's definitely other things that kind of go along with that, which mm -hmm. is, which is why the kind of the good school thing kind of covers you in a lot of bases. You know. Oh yeah. Well, you know your house. If you're in that school district, you know your house is is gonna it's gonna appreciate faster. Yep. Like that, so. I've been to Richmond a lot. I know the places I like to partake in. Uh huh. <laughs> but, I, but I don't live there. So when when it comes to what you would choose as far as entertainment in the the restaurant bars that realm, what would you say? Oh my gosh, we have so many. Richmond's a foodie town, yeah. so you can go. I mean, the fan has probably got just it's probably the, the best place to walk around. And you, there's restaurants on almost every block, very community oriented, um, and it, and the fan's an older area, so you know it's got a lot of history to it too. So you've got the fan, you've got Shaco Bottom, Shaco Slip. They've got great places to eat, and even just in the suburbs, you have a lot of uh, locally owned restaurants that are just super. And it doesn't matter what type of food you're, you're looking for; we've got it. <laughs> and yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> that's that's one of the reasons I personally like Richmond is that 
I feel like every time I go there, I can have a different experience than the last oh, yeah. time I went there, which uh -huh. sometimes is tough if you get it in your head that you really like something because we'll have to force ourselves to go, no, 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 we're going to try something different. We're gonna I, mean, you've got to, you've got to, I mean, you've got to try them all because they really are just excellent restaurants down the van. That and I always, I, uh, like you said, because of the, you know, the age of Richmond, I, I it's one of my favorite cities to just kind of walk around mm -hmm. because everything has this almost, you know, nostalgic, historic feel to it right. where it's just, uh, it's, it's a really cool environment mm -hmm. and just from an aesthetic standpoint, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and being in Virginia, I'm sure there's probably, you're probably not far. I mean, I'm sure the city has a ton of, of breweries and stuff like that, but oh, you yeah. probably, you probably wouldn't have to drive that far outside the city to find some wineries and things of that nature. Oh, no, no, they're all, you know, within 30, 40 miles, you'll come across a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. And they, you know, they're, they're actually some of the wines are really good. Virginia grapes are, they're darn good. I'm good. <laughs> I, I can attest to this personally that, that yes, they are. They are in fact really good. It's one of those things that, you know, I, I, I probably had a bit of a preconceived notion on wine and like, Oh, if it's not from like here or here, it's probably, oh, yeah. it's not from California or Italy. It's a, you know, but then it's like, it's uh, not good. yeah, it's like, <laughs> Oh no, it turns out uh, you can actually grow some pretty nice grapes everywhere. Cause I've had a oh, lot yeah. of Virginia wines that mm -hmm. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. And that actually, the reason I, I figured that out was because I had friends who were doing a bit of uh, kind of winery hopping through Virginia, which I didn't uh -huh. even know you could really do because I didn't really oh, yeah. look into it. And then I said, well, that, that seems like a fun day trip for me. So, well, yeah, we ended up going to a couple and it's like, oh, wow. I Now, to be fair, I've never met a glass of wine I didn't like by the end of it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but hey, I was genuinely surprised at, at some of the good stuff that was really available there. Oh, yeah. And then um, where would you – so because, I mean, obviously Richmond is a decent-sized city, but I, the same way with the, the wineries, it's like you don't have to go very far probably to find – um, some outdoor stuff, some some activities that that can get you moving, and like the hiking. Oh, no. we, we've got the James River Park system, which is just awesome. You've got areas where you can drop your kayak in and float down the river, or your, your uh, flotation device and float down the river for miles. Because you've got the flat water area, which is actually close to me. It's in the more suburban area, and you can you can get in the water and kayak all day long, and come in and get out at the same place. You've got buttermilk trails going around the river. And of course, there's lots of parks. You've got Bird Park, Maymont Park, uh, Bryan Park is in the area and to enjoy. It. And a lot of the areas that will have smaller parks that are, you know, that have running trails or exercise courses or, you know, something to do. The Virginia area has a lot of really interesting trails um, and some surprisingly difficult ones I've found uh, somewhat by mm -hmm. accident. Um, I, but you get some, you get some great, great mountainous views, some really fun stuff to go through. Uh, and you know, it's another thing. It's like, all I, I it's kind of nice to, to be able to be in a city or even be in the surrounding area, but have all that stuff at your disposal. I mean, yeah. It's just right there. I mean, I can, I can get home from work, put the kayak on my car and in five minutes I can go kayaking. It's awesome. What about anything as far as, uh, you know, special events, uh, things like that, that happen in Richmond, any type of festivals or? Well, like I said, Richmond's a foodie place. So we have festivals for just about every taste you want, based mostly between February and um, October. Once you get into November, December, January, they're kind of off, but you have festivals, Greek festival, Lebanese festival, Armenian festival, you know, Oktoberfest just tons of them. And then we also have NASCAR comes to town twice a year. Mm -hmm. And then, um, although we don't have any uh, uh, pro sports teams here, you've got U of R basketball and football, and you've got VCU uh, basketball, mm -hmm. and all of those are big events for us. 
lots of fun. Yeah, you have a you have a, a different food selection every week to ruin your diet. Oh, exactly. <laughs> you, you would you would not be on a diet. You'd be on the seafood diet. You see food yeah. and you eat it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like me. I was gonna I was gonna stick with the diet, but then the Armenian food festival happened. It's like all right, here I can't. You know, I know the Greek like, festival is in. Greek, I, what am I gonna do? Not go to that? Like that, that oh, you seems, can't. You have to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't there's was such big social events. Yeah. You see people you haven't seen in years. And uh, so there's obviously a lot to do, uh, regardless of what you're into. Um, oh, yeah. But when it comes to uh, when it comes to homes in the area, what type of homes are around? Because I feel like, given the age of the area, you're probably going to get a pretty diverse section of, you know, your old colonials oh, yeah. uh, into into some some more modern, newer built. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're infilling a lot of the fan area, which I'd mentioned before, and they've got the uh, the fan area has uh, a lot of row houses, and now what they're doing, and maybe if there's a even an alleyway back there, they're filling this in with much mo more modern homes. So you've got mo you've got homes that were built in the 1800s, a few in the 1700s are still around, and then as you as you go out of the fan area and and west or or you know, out of the main city area, then your homes are a little bit newer. You know, you're going to have some that are in the 1920s. As you go further out, like Stratford Hills is, is across the river from downtown. And those houses were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. You've got West River Hills, also south of the river. And they were built in the 40s in Woodland Heights, which is closer to downtown, 1920s. And it's the same as you go into neighborhoods um, south, uh, north of the river as well. So um, you've got a good selection. Of course, um, if you buy a newer home, you're almost guaranteed to have a garage. If you buy an older home, it was probably added on at some time if there is one. Yeah. They it, did it, a lot of garages back, back in the day. It, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I, me, me from a personal standpoint, I always like the the older aesthetic on the outside with the newer, mm -hmm. more contemporary interior. Like, mm -hmm. The, there's nothing like walking up and you know living in like a, an old like an old Georgetown style like uh, you know really kind of classic looking, but then uh, inside you have all the accoutrements of you know modern technology oh, yeah. and you well, know. and you have a lot of that now because people are going in and and updating and, and just redoing the inside of these houses. So you think you're going into this you know older townhouse, you know you know, connected and you walk in and it's just wide open. And actually yeah. they're doing great jobs on these. Yeah. What would you say the um the median home price is in the area? Median home price is about um three hundred and eighty thousand. So that's way up from what it was pre COVID, which was um, about two eighty five. Mm -hmm. But um yeah you know, we've had some great appreciation in the last three years. So but yeah the median's about three eighty. That's that all things considered, that is not bad at all. No, I mean, you go to Northern Virginia, where is that? 600. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're, you're here and suddenly you're at six, seven hundred, and and probably not getting the same amount of house. I know, either. and you're much smaller. Yeah, and, that's, you know, that's, and a lot of times it depends on what area of town you're in. You know, the West End is going to be super expensive, the South Side tends to be a little bit more reasonable. But I mean, there's some areas that are still, you know, they're just, um, we're still getting multiple offers on some houses and we're still getting tons of, if you're in the city, it's really, the city is super hot right now. What do you say the median income is for? Median, now I had to look that one up and that was about, 50, I think they said it was 58,000. Okay. Um, for the last, the last time it was, it was done about 58,000 for the area. That, that was a meeting. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that probably seems about right. That probably tracks with relation to, you know, when you think about the 380K, uh, that actually, yeah. Right. It probably know. falls in line there. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, uh, now, when you say that, like, 380,000, how much home would you say you're getting for something that, relatively speaking? Yeah. And it would depend on the area in the city. You, I mean, that could be a 1,200 square foot home, yeah. no garage but updated and nice. Um, but if you're going outside the suburbs, you could get an 1800 square foot home, three bedroom, three to four bedroom, two and a half baths and a garage. 
um, you know, and, and you know, a quarter acre, give or take mm -hmm. a little bit. So. I mean, that's great because it gives you a lot of options as far as your selection. You know? Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, some people are, are definitely down for the city life. Some people want that, that, that ability to, to have their home separate from, from everything and be able to have mm -hmm. some space and quiet. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. Which some would argue you can't really put a price on. I would be one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, people like their privacy. That is true. <laughs> Exactly. That, that's, you know, when I was younger, I thought, man, I really want to live in the city. And then when I got older, I said, man, I really never want to live in the city. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I grew up in the country, but I really enjoy the convenience of being in, and we're in a suburb, we're not down in the urban area. But um, I really enjoy the convenience of being close to everything. And I love to be in the urban area. I can't get my husband to, to live urban. He wants to He wants his space. <laughs> So that that's that's one thing I love is that proximity, like you're saying, because you know where where I live, being uh, you know about an hour from DC, it's uh -huh. great because you know I've got my piece of land and I have my peace and quiet. But I know that in just an hour, I can I can be in DC and anything that I want to do, I can do. Right. You know? Right. And it's the, kind of the same thing there, where it's like you can have your little separate set of peace and tranquility, but anything you want to do, well, the option's right there with not a lot of oh, yeah. time. And, you know, one other good thing about the Richmond area is we're about two hours from everything. We're two hours from the mountains, two hours from the ocean, and two hours from D.C. So it's kind of, you know, we're just centrally located. So, like, you know, great day trips. Even if you don't want to stay in town, take a day trip. <laughs> Yeah, you could just look at a map and treat it like a clock, and you could just go around like, all right, this weekend we're going here, and then here. here it's and two hours. <laughs> all right. Well, if you could give one piece of advice to a buyer before moving to Richmond, what would it be? Be prepared. Um, you know, even though we're having to slow down the market, you know, because of economy and, and just, you know, people got tired, just be prepared because, um, you know, talk to your lender, talk to your, um, talk to, you know, make sure you're, you're set that way. So that's the big thing for buying a home, but just to, to come to Richmond, just, you know, be ready to have an adventure because there's so much to do in Richmond. There's something going on every weekend. If you're bored in Richmond, you're not paying attention. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, you sit around and you go, well, what are we going to do? And it's like, well, whatever you'd like. Yeah, I know. Really. Do you want to eat? Do you want to play? Do you want to watch? I mean, we've got great theater. We've got we've got a lot of great musicians in the area. So there's always something to do. <laughs> yeah. And that's the, that's. You know, you never want to feel bored in an area like that. And, and I, I, as much as like, I, I love Richmond myself, so I, I know uh, that that would never be the case. Oh, no. There's always something to do, trust me. Excellent. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you for being here today and answering these questions to give us a feel for what it's like to live and enjoy our off time in Richmond. Um, if you're interested in moving to Richmond, then please see our contact information below the video and ask for Sandra and we'll be able to arrange for her to give you a call as soon as possible to help facilitate your looking at some property or maybe thinking about getting into Richmond. All right. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Thanks so much, Mike. Take care.